Yo, what's up guys? You got Pokeaim here with my week 5 battle of the Smogon Premier League SPL. This time I'm playing 69 Ace Matador or AM in DPP OU. DPP OU, 4th gen OU is my favorite generation and my favorite um, tier to play of all time. I actually never ever got tired of 4th gen OU. It's just that 5th gen came out so everybody switched to it. But um, I am currently 0 and 4 and AM is actually 0 and 4 as well. But he's been playing pretty well. He's definitely been playing pretty well. Some games he's been getting the short end of the stick. And, um, well, you know what's been happening to me. But, uh, in any case, I'm really excited to be playing DPOU. I love this tier so much. And I actually have a lead. There's no team preview. I have lead Skarmory. Main reason I have lead Skarmory is because AM loves Pokemon like Machamp and Roserade. And Lumberry Skarmory does deal with both, giving me either Spikes or uh, Brave Birds on them. So, we're going to lead off with Skarmory as he's going to lead off with Starmie. Now, there's... Two things this Starmie could be. It could either be offensive, which is rather, or which is either Life Warp or Specs as a lead, or it could be a defensive Starmie and you just use it as a lead. And I'm going to be fighting a semi stall or balance or bulky offense. Well, more so, I'm leaning more towards semi stall slash stall team. So, um, always, always, always the play for my opponent is Hydro Pump here. I could have Tyranitar in the back. I could have Heat Rain in the back. I could have pretty much Pokemon that can come in on Thunderbolt and either punish Starmie if they're choice, like Tyranitar, if it's choice Banner, choice Scarf. Or even Pashu Berry. Basically, you always hide your pump here. And knowing that, I'm going to go out into my Milotic. I am an offensive Milotic, but I knew I could take any it and recover it off. He goes for Hydro Pump and gets a crit. However, by that damage, I know that this is definitely bulky Starmie. That does absolutely nothing. So I'll go for recovery here just in case he does have Trend in the back. Gyarados. Uh, though I doubt it at this point, but I need to be healthy enough to take them on. Brings out Clefable. Clefable usually has Thunder Wave, Knock Off, um, Seismitoss, and Softball. That's the real, that's the new trend. Not the new trend, but that's the trend with Clef uh, nowadays. Clef should actually be OU by usage in DVP, but we don't usually count usage from years ago. But Clef should definitely be OU, uh, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, so I go into my Skarmory. I don't really care about my Lumber. I don't think it's going to be too valuable in this game. I'm just going to use this Clef as spike fodder. I want to be able to wear down what I'm expecting to be stuff like Tyranitar, a Steel type in the back. Um, even Starmie, and I'm actually going to go for Whirlwind here because I don't want him going directly into Starmie. I want to phase around his team and see what he has. So, phase him into Needle Queen. I'm, I'm figuring this thing is just going to set up Stealth Rock and or Toxic Spike. I'm just going to get up my uh, second layer of Spikes right here as he is going to set up his Stealth Rock. And the good thing is, if he does have Toxic Spike, which he does reveal, I have one Pokemon on my team that is actually hit by Toxic Spike, and that's my Lodigan, which is why I'm going to go directly into it because I don't want it to be badly poisoned by two layers of Toxic Spike. I'd rather be regularly poisoned, not only meaning I take less overall, but also activates my Marvel scale, making me bulkier on the physically defensive side. So uh, I go around to my Lodic as he's phasing me around with Roar, phases me out to Skarmory. I go for Will, and obviously his Roar cancels me out and phases me out. And I decided just to throw off a Hydro Pump because I didn't want to go for Recover and have him. I didn't want to go for recover and have him um, have him phase me out again. And also, if he was bold me, Hydro Pump into HP Electric would be able to knock him out. And my Lodic does outspeed bold me. Though, I don't think he would be bold star me. Bold me, it's bold star me. By the way, I don't think he'd be bold star me on this team. Because at the moment, it looks ridiculously weak to Infernape. So you definitely don't want star me to be uh, bold. I think on certain builds, it can afford to. But on this one, I don't think it was. Uh, but brings in Clefable. Which is fine. I do have Skarmory. Basically, I can roost off anything he wants to go for. I can phase him around. I uh, goes right for knockoff. Again, I don't want to lose my Milotic item just yet when I do have Skarmory as a good pivot. By the way, in this generation, knockoff was 20 base power, which is why it's doing absolutely nothing. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I believe it's 20 base power. But I'm going to phase him out with Whirlwind into Tyranitar, and that's great. Uh, rather this be Scarf Tar or Bantar. Honestly, I have a BKC team that's very similar to this, if not the same team. So I was thinking... Um, Obviously, Spin Blocker as one of his last, so a Rotom Form, a Rotom Appliance, and then either a Steel Type. Uh, I'm surprised he, I didn't have Skarmory, to be honest, but I phase him into Tyranitar, which is great because if it is Scarf Tar, um, after another spike, it is in, and Stealth Rockets in range of Bullet Punch from Lucario, and it obviously dies to plus two Bullet Punch anyway. Uh, but he knocks me out with Stone Edge, so it has to be Banded Tyranitar, which means I can go right out to my Choice Band Flygon, and we're just going to click uh, U Turn right here. I don't know what he has la um, as his last two. I'm Thinking one of them was a Rotom Appliance, as it was. Rotom is actually Ghost and Electric this generation, so uh, he tried to dodge an EQ, obviously. And I do have Spadef Tram, which does take on Scarf Rotom for days, which I'm thinking he is. You usually run Scarf Rotom as your spin blocker because it spin blocks Starmie and can threaten that thing with Thunderbolt. So I uh, decided so just go for Rocks here. I don't think you'd go hard Starmie. 
uh, with all these hazards up. Even if you saw leftovers on train, I don't think you go hard star me. You pivot into Clefable first. So we're gonna get up our Stealth Rock as uh, Clefable isn't come out. I don't want to lose my leftovers just yet because that's helping me take on Rotom. Uh, so we're gonna go out to my Lodic. At this point, I don't think it necessarily needs, um, or it's def necessarily the most useful this game, just because I doubt his last is like a Sweeper Gyarados or anything like that. Um, and it's basically my pivot into Lucario. I do have Lucario in the back, but I don't want to bring Lucario on knockoff because obviously that'll get rid of my life orb and that'll make me a bit weaker. And I don't want to bring Lucario on Thunder Wave. I definitely don't want my Lucario being T-Wave. So what I'm actually going to do here is kind of condition him for a little bit to going for um, Seismic Toss. And if he wants to switch to Starmie, that would have been fine. But what I'm trying to do is, like I said, condition him to keep going for Seismic Toss. That way... Um, when I do recover my 1% per turn, which is pretty much what I'm recovering, uh, with no leftovers and sand and poison, uh, eventually he will go for a size and toss on the turn I want to, and I can risk Lucario and force out Clefable. So, I'm just gonna speed this up. Uh, I believe at this turn, on turn 20 or 21, I, okay, it was at 21. Um, basically this is the most HP I could probably have, uh, at the end of the day, around 36%, so... Uh, I still go for recovery here. I think uh, that would have been the turn to switch out, to be honest. But I'm also trying to stall him out of recovers as well. But uh, what I can do now... Is, oh, okay. I got 1% more. Never mind. I made the play. I made the right play. So we're going to go out into our Lucario right here on the Sizen Toss, which I have conditioned him for. And he has two Lucario switch-ins at this point. Needle Queen or Rotom. Um, I'm thinking more so Needle Queen is going to come out because it does take close combat. And you don't want to risk Rotom. You don't want to risk me going for Crunch. Uh, so I'm actually going to pull a double out into my Choice Bam Flygon. I don't think he'd stay in with Clefable. If he did, he'd go for Thunder Wave anyway. But I force in the Needle Queen. Take that Hazard damage. That is racking up spikes and stalls. It's just so delicious when they're racking. It's like, oof. Hey, yeah, boy. But I'm going to go right for the Earthquake again because his entire team is grounded. And at this point, if Rotom Heat is your best switch, and there's no way your last is Skarmory or uh, even a Ground Immune at that point. I'm thinking it's a Steel type. Jirachi or Train. I think Jirachi fits better. Um, but the thing that I was a little bit thrown off by, but it, it definitely made the game easier, was the fact that this is more than likely Scarf Rotom. And uh, it's actually confirmed in a second that it's Scarf Rotom. But uh, the thing I was thrown off by was that I think on these types of teams, Defensive Rotom is better with potentially Scarf Rachi or even some sort of Rachi in the back. Um, but because I already have or I already showed Heatran as my main switch and I show Lucario and my Lodic is already poison, there's three things that will happen here. He's gonna go for Thunderbolt. He's gonna go for Thunderbolt trying to catch Heatran and wear it down or try to uh, knock on my Lodic or catch um, Lucario. He's gonna go for Trick. Trick would obviously cripple my Heatran. Because I do need my leftovers, but getting rid of the choice scarf on Rotom is worse for him because then my Flygon puts in more work for him, or he's gonna double out. So I decide to actually stay in and lock myself into Earthquake. While he does have more Thunderbolts than I do have Earthquakes, and it actually uh, shows right here he is choice scarf, and I knew he would go for Thunderbolt trick. Um, I wouldn't mind too much about the trick, though obviously getting choice scarf Flygon would be a little bit worse for me. At the same time, it would actually allow me to revenge kill Starmie, and while it would be worse for something like Clefable, uh, I do have Lucario on the back to deal with that, so I wasn't necessarily worried about it. But I figured Thunderbolt was coming out or the other two plays that I did say, none of which hurt Flygon. So we're going to stay in and go for Earthquake, and even though I am losing more PP than he's going for because Thunderbolt does have more PP than Earthquake at this point, or it does in general, um, I am fine because Sandstorm is wearing down Rotom to the point of plus two bullet punch, and that was my game plan. Either get a kill with Flygon, force a kill, and weaken Rotom for plus two bullet punch range, which it should be in really soon after sand. So if I get off a Swords Dance with Lucario, Rotom is definitely threatened. So at this point, he realizes he's getting so weakened. He's actually gonna switch out to um, Needle Queen as again, I stay in, go for Earthquake. One of Lucario's checks is gone. Needle Queen is gone. And now what he could do is go out to Starmory. I definitely don't want him spinning. I don't want him ice beaming. I doubt he is bold Starmory at this point. We're gonna go right out into our Rotom. I am Scarf Rotom. This is my spin blocker. It's Ghost Electric. Like I said, it's not water in this generation. And uh, Tyranitar is there. Um, while Tyranitar will more than likely be 2 KO'd by uh, Thunderbolt after residual damage, I don't want him going Clefable, and then I have to pivot again or sack my Lodic. I want to save my Lodic for another sack later. So what I'm actually going to do, 
because there's no way you stay with Starmie here. Maybe he could have stayed in with Starmie. Star staying with Starmie would actually been a very good play, but I'll pull the double out into my Flygon, expecting to catch either Clefable or Tyranitar, as he does end up doubling out into Tyranitar, or ends up doing that double, and I can just go right for Earthquake. Uh, I know he's banded just based on the fact that he knocked out Skarmory. Also, there was no way he was in Custap range at that point, so I'm going to be able to knock out the Tyranitar with the Earthquake, as Starmie is going to come out, and again, all I have to do is spin block. I'm going to go right out to Rotom. I live defensive Hydro Pump, I can spin block, and I force Starmie to take all that hazards. And if he went for recover there, obviously I have my Rotom in. And um, I'm thinking at this point, you don't risk Clefable on a trick, since Clefable is your main way of actually dealing with my Heat Ran, just the fact that it can knock off and Sizen Toss stall it. So my best play is definitely going for Thunderbolt here. Would knock out Starmie, also knocks out Rotom. I didn't want to go for trick and have Rotom get the uh, Choice Scarf, because in this generation, if you trick and you both have choice items, you're locked into tricks. So you have to keep going for trick. So. Uh, we're going to go for Thunderbolt as that does knock out Rotom after the Stealth Rock damage. And apparently my 7% Rotom is also going to die. I didn't expect it to die, but I should have uh, looked up to see if it was like 6 plus 3. But he does reveal Jirachi. I am going to go out to my Lucario because Lucario would KO Starmie with Extreme Speed and would be able to get a Ridicule Fable as he reveals his last, which is Jirachi. Um, I kind of doubt it's Super Rachi on this type of team, so I'm going to go hard Heat Ran as he does reveal the Fire Punch. So I'm thinking it could be a Body Slam variant um, with Iron Head. Uh, fire Punch, it could be Subtoxic. Either way, I am Flash Fire boosted, so Starmie would die to Lava Plume after Hazards with Sandstorm. So we're gonna go right for that Lava Plume. Because he did reveal Fire Punch and I saw Leftovers, there's no way he's HP ground. So we're gonna go right for the Lava Plume here as we force Clefable to go for Softball. And I don't wanna get knocked off on my Heat because uh, there is a possibility that I could be flinched to death by a max speed Jirachi. Um, and having my Leftovers obviously make me beat it 1v1. So we're gonna go out into my Melodic on the knockoff. And what I can do here is actually just throw off a last ditch effort HP electric. I wasn't expecting to catch Starmie at all, but the thing is, if he did keep in Clefable, I got in Lucario and I clicked Close Combat anyway and got a kill, so it didn't really matter what I clicked right here. But I did click HP electric as he actually ended up going out to Starmie, and we're both gonna go down this turn. So Starmie is gone, and now Choice Band Flygon can come right in and do what it's been doing all game and click Earthquake. Uh, even if he was Max Speed Rachi. I, I guess he, there is a possibility that he could have Ice Punch, but one, he has to win a speed type because I'm Jolly, Choice Band Flygon, not Adamant. And um, two, uh, the likelihood of him having Ice Punch, I don't know, I didn't really expect it. Uh, though his team is pretty weak to Gliscor. Huh. I don't know, maybe he could have HP Ice on Rotom. Mm, I doubt it. I think it'd be will on this type of team. But either way, going out to Choice Band Flygon was my best play. Um, if he did have Ice Punch, I'd just go Heat Ran. i click Lava Plume until... I die, and then I just go Lucario, click Close Combat, and then Extreme Speed Jirachi after Hazards and knock it out. So either way, the game was mine. So we do potentially win a speed tie, but I kind of doubt it was a speed tie. And we're going to be able to knock him out with Earthquake. Clefable's going to come out. Even if he knocks me off, I do have Earthquake and Outrage to knock him out. And Choice Ban, Earthquake. And Clefable, by the way, is normal type in this generation. Not fair if you guys didn't know, but uh, I do have the Choice Ban out. Uh, earthquake, excuse me, to 2 AKO Clefable, and that is going to be good game. So I finally, finally, finally get my first win this season of SPL, and it feels good. And I'm really happy because I feel like I played this match well, um, and I'm also happy that it happens to be my favorite tier that I got my first win in. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Of course, feel free to leave a like, subscribe, follow me on Twitch and Twitter. Those links are down below, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye, friends.